Hey, Mr. Ben, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. Did you catch that last video? The other guys video? Did? Yeah, that was, uh, was a good one. It was. We learned a lot about geologic time. We're going to jump right into kind of correlation from their ideas. Yeah, no, we're definitely going to be using a lot of those when we're talking about correlation. So mm -hmm. here you have the learning targets, 36 through 48. Make sure you're keeping an eye on those as you go through uh, this video. And uh, let's get started. Yeah, they can flip back to the, the previous video right. for some clues to help them with correlation and other things. All right. Let's see what we got. All right, so let's talk about correlation just by itself. All right, and um, uh, the matching of rocks of similar ages. So if we take a look at this diagram right here, it looks like we've got uh, kind of like a geologic time scale that's gonna, that we're going to talk about later on in a different video. But we have all these different kind of layers of rocks, and they mm -hmm. all seem to be horizontal. And that's going to one law that we talked law about last original video. horizontality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they all have these different names to it, which is commonplace when we're identifying different rock layers. And in the last video, they talked about some places you might be missing some layers and other places you can find them. So yeah, those are the unconformities that they were talking about, just gaps in time. So kind of like in this canyon, you can get this series of rocks and then you don't have anything above it. Yeah. But if you go over to another canyon, then you can see a bigger section of it. Yeah. And maybe this canyon over here, it doesn't have those rocks, so you can actually go to different places on the earth mm -hmm. and see different sections that you couldn't see other yeah. places and find those unconformities they were talking about. And then you about. can also find similar sections and correlate those sections. So like if you went to the top of this canyon and you found this Navajo sandstone, mm -hmm. and then you walked over um, to um, this canyon over here or drove over to it, and at the bottom of that canyon, you found the same layer. Mm -hmm. Even though it's like maybe 100 miles away, you could say, wow, those are the same rocks using those fossils. And you could realize where that one left off at the top, this one yeah. actually picks up. Yeah. So that's correlating. You're finding similar rock layers or fossils in different rock layers and, and showing in different areas how they're the same age. Exactly. So what kind of fossils they have out there? Oh, they got all kinds of different fossils, and we've seen a lot of fossils. We have some in class uh, that we're going to show uh, a little bit in this video or talk about. Okay, we got that, that big mammoth up there like that. A long time ago, yeah. what they, you know, they, they might be flash frozen in the ice, so we can have like uh, actual remains of the organism itself, not even sure. ones that are turned into rock. Yeah, and those actually have been uh, made a lot of news lately. They actually find mm -hmm. them with fur and everything intact, like that have been frozen for thousands of years. So you can have original remains that could be frozen, or they could be in this amber material, which is like yeah. fossilized tree sap, sap exactly. kind of like in Jurassic Park 1 in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we've got the tar pits. Uh, out in California, when my family went there, um, they have places where... The, an animal fell in the tar, mm -hmm. and another animal thought, ooh, free lunch, jumps on his back, and so you get a bunch of these animals that kind of sunk in the tar pits, low oxygen environment, so you can find the organisms um, preserved really well. So yeah. that's original preservation. Got it. By ice, amber, and tar. Right? Mm hmm Okay. What else we have? All right, so fossil preservation, so the replacement of the remains, so they're not the original remains, mm -hmm. and that's probably more commonly what people think about when they, when they think about fossils or, or hold fossils, right? right? So uh, bones and shells that we have here, and then we have uh, dissolved, oh, look at this one. Looks like kind of a hip bone to yeah, me. Yeah, it does, right? Like a ball and socket joint over mm -hmm. here on this one side. Well, that's heavy. Paper. So yeah, that's, that is that's heavy. been replaced. The calcium yeah. of the bones now is actually rock. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this one exactly. I found actually on my friend's property outside of Dallas. So way far away from the ocean, but yet that's the fossil of an organism that, that lived there. And this isn't like shell, this is yeah. rock. So you can have the bones or the shells replaced by um, harder material under underground. It gets replaced piece by piece. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a couple hard pieces of, you know, they look like trees. Yeah, they look like, they look like wood. But they're hard. Yeah, they are. They, yeah, it's, it's a lot heavier than what wood would be. Mm -hmm. So you can't burn it in a fireplace, but pot, uh, fossilized or petrified wood, you replace the little mm -hmm. pieces of wood atom by atom under underground by water taking it away. Sure. So that's another one. If an animal or a plant or something fell into the mud and uh -huh. then something came by and took it out, that would leave behind an impression, right? Yeah. So now we have things like molds and casts. Yes. Um, that uh, can be formed as well. And I think is that one right there um, that we have? Sometimes it's, this one might be, 
um, carbonaceous film, but if, if this was the Glossopteris plant leaf and it made an impression and it came out, then yes, yeah. it could be. Sometimes you have to look and if you look inside it, you can tell if it's the original remains or if it's just like just the surface. Got it. Uh, what else do we have? That's a big dinosaur footprint. This yeah, that eat. is. Yeah, and we have that hand there for scale. We can see that it's uh, quite a few times larger than that hand mm -hmm. right there, that dinosaur footprint. And that will, that's what we're going to consider a, a trace fossil, that we that we know that it was there, mm -hmm. uh, but it just left its trace there. It's not the actual remains itself. Right. And I, I remember doing a lab where they look at the size of the foot, they can figure out the length of the leg and the stride of the footprints. Yeah, and they can determine how fast it could run. And how big it was, too. Yeah, you're right. That's right. How big those footprints were apart. Sure. And then there's other different kinds, trails and burrows. And actually, in one of the labs that we did for sedimentary environments, mm -hmm. we saw um, a rock that had those burrows in it. Exactly. And those trails in there. So uh, animals can leave their, their mark. Right. So you don't make a hole any bigger than your body, so you can tell how big the animal was by its burrow and copper lights. Mm -hmm. You can tell roughly how big the animal was, or if you look inside, you can tell what they ate. Yeah. All right. All right. Index fossils. These kind of go back to correlation, right? Yeah, they do actually, and they're really, really important in uh, in determining uh, a lot of what the geologic time scale was about, mm -hmm. and trying to determine the age of certain rock layers, mm -hmm. right? So if we only have uh, uh, an or an animal or or something that existed for a really short amount of time, right, and uh, and existed in a certain area, and then it died, mm -hmm. right, and left its fossil remains there, and because it was only uh, around for a short time, we know when it was around and if we see it in other places we can we know what age that rock would be All right so um, mr baldwin's favorite fossil the glossopteris um this one wegner used because he said you know this was found in places like what, antarctica and in india and in south america and so it lived for a relatively short period of time but in a wide geographic area so if you know how old it is, mm -hmm. you can whatever wherever you find it, you can tell the climate at the time, and you yeah. can tell how old those rocks were. Sure. So it's got to be easily recognizable. Looks like yeah. fern. It's got to be found in a, over a large geographic area, mm -hmm. and only live for geologically a yeah. short period of time, maybe a million years or so. Exactly. Okay. Ooh, back to more correlations. Yeah, and uh, and tying together the correlation with the index fossils. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have uh, two kind of like sets of strata here, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we can see at the top of this they're miles away from each other, so a long way away. Right. And if we take a look, all the all the layers here are numbered, mm -hmm. right? As we can see, and then inside those numbers or in those layers, we have fossils there. All right. So uh, let's take a look. It looks like we've got uh, one through six over here on the right, mm -hmm. but then we only have three, four. And we don't have five, and then we got six, seven, and then we've got seven and eight over here on the left hand side. So, what's going on here? Well, at first so glance, it, they might seem like it's impossible to correlate them because yeah. this rock layer right here is limestone, the little bricks, and sure. that one's uh, your sandstone. Uh -huh. So, you might say, well, they don't have anything to do with each other because they're two different rocks. But yeah. yet, the fossils in them were the same. Huh. So, they can combine those and they could say these came from the same period of time. Sure. Above it, same thing, two different types of rock, but yeah. yet the same fossil lets you know, hey, if you measure the thickness, you can actually see basically yeah. um, the same thickness. You can tell over there you're missing, like they were missing saying. Missing time, so there's some kind of an unconformity there, and they exactly. have that kind of like jagged line that indicates an erosional surface, mm -hmm. so uh, there wasn't deposition going on at that time. So where five should be, it's now missing. Yeah. And then you go with that, um, I don't know, it looks like an elf shoe to me, yeah. that fossil right there. Uh -huh. And then where that one leaves off, then there's a couple layers on top that were never maybe preserved, or they might have been eroded. Yeah. So index fossils are really valuable for correlation. All right. This Gee, reminds me of what just happened in Russia. Yeah, you're right with that whole uh, meteorite impact. It was actually a busy day uh, in mm -hmm. the exosphere uh, <laughs> on Friday, not only with the meteorite, but then with the asteroid coming within uh, 17,000 miles of Earth. Yeah, kind of scary stuff. Yeah. So uh, some of these pictures uh, uh, look kind of dramatic, but um, and I'm sure everybody's familiar with, uh, with the dinosaurs uh, becoming mm -hmm. extinct, etc. 65 million years ago with the meteor impact. Um, and actually, they proved that, I think, in 1980 with iridium. 
Mm -hmm. They were finding layers, and they found these layers of iridium. It's a real faint, small layer, and they mm -hmm. found it everywhere. All over there? Yeah, all over the and place. And iridium's a rare earth element, right? It is. It is. You're right. So scientists were saying, some some say it might come from volcanic eruptions from when India was colliding. Yeah. But I've heard exactly what you're saying. Maybe what hit the earth had a lot of that rare earth element. Could be a combination of both, but you're right. All around the Earth, you have a very thin layer of iridium, and you can tell right when that KT boundary is, right? Yeah. 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs basically checked out, and yeah. then the mammals kind of took over. And we would see that in the fossil record as well, where we would see a lot of dinosaur fossils of all different kinds, mm -hmm. but then we have that iridium layer, mm -hmm. and then we don't see any more fossils um, above that layer or in younger layers. Or anything that's big, maybe just like yeah. crocodiles exactly. and alligators, things like that. All right. All right. We are ready for our next quiz. Wow, that was a good quick one, but a lot yeah, of inf is. information. There is. All right. So you definitely want to get to that homepage and uh, check out that quiz. Uh, make sure you have your uh, notes and slides there ready to answer those mm -hmm. questions. And uh, we will see you next time. Yeah. And then go over, you know, what we did. You know, watch it as much as you want. And, yeah. you know, they can take the quiz again if they want to. Exactly. All right. Good All luck. Right. See you later. Take care.